home run. But even a triple's okay. We're gonna cheer and boo and raise a hullabaloo at the ball game to win. Batter up, break one. Hey, the game has just begun and the home team's out to win. music there to get every give everybody a chance just people to get a chance to get into the stream here welcome back we're gonna finish up the first week of may tonight we've got a few more teams that we need to highlight and make sure everybody gets to see their team uh i see hey bernie's in and clues in so what we'll do then the team the games that we're going to play are going to be mid michigan st pete lehigh liverpool and Hadley Lake Carpathian. So uh, we'll go ahead and sim a couple here to get, get to those games. Hey, David, welcome. Uh, why is this listed as human? Let's try that again. There we go. All right. Oh, uh, one nothing shut out for Chico's. Well, that was good after a three-game losing streak. We needed something like that. McDowell gets his third win. He's 3-0, and and Nagy loses. He's 1-4. and We're going to go on to Berlin at T-Ville. Wow, Berlin with a big win over T-Ville, 10-2. Key goes 2-2 two two for the season. Ruth once again loses. 1-5 and five for Ruth, so he needs some assistance on that team to get him some wins over there. All right. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if, Dave, I'm not sure if Steve's going to come in. I clues here. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and start mid-Michigan. Usually Slash is around, but we're going to go ahead and play it. Hopefully he'll show up in time to watch his game. And uh, why is this doing this? Give me a minute. It's showing up on the wrong screen. Give me one minute. All right, I think we've got this. Yes, now we've got it right. Let's do this. Okay, we're at Comiskey Park for tonight's game between Michigan and St. Pete. St. Pete just uh, has won one of their last 10, so they're struggling a little bit there. Ernie Broglio sets, uh, will get the start for Michigan. He's got uh, three starts on the year. He's 0-1 with an ERA of 190, 193. That's a great ERA for somebody who's 0-1. His first start against St. Pete tonight, and he's going to be opposed by Jack Powell for St. Pete. He's made six starts on the year and is 2-4 with an ERA of 505. 
His second start against Mid-Michigan. He's 0-1 against Mid-Michigan with an 11.25 ERA. It's 61 degrees. Wind speed is four miles per hour. Out to right center field. Play ball! All right, so for Mid-Michigan, we've got in the lineup, Larry uh, Barry Bonds, excuse me, Barry Bonds will lead it off. Curtis Grandison will be batting second. Matt Williams will be batting third. Jim Tomei, designated here, will be batting fourth. Miguel Cabrera will be batting fifth. In the sixth spot, Lou Whitaker. Batting seventh will be Alan Treadmill Trammell. Uh, Willie McGee will be batting eighth. And P Ivan Pudge Rodriguez will be batting in the ninth spot. For the St. Pete defense, we've got Mitchell Page in left field. Willie Wilson in center field. Paul, Monde Ma Paul Mondesi, excuse me, in right field. Paul Canerco will be first baseman. Bobby Richardson in second. Marty Marion in shortstop. Tim Wallach will be third baseman. Behind the plate catching, Ray Schalk. We saw him hit a home run last night. And on the mound, Jack Powell. Six games started so far this season. 41 innings pitched. 40 hits, 23 earned runs, 12 of those were home runs, 11 walks, 45 strikeouts with that four, uh, 505 ERA. And off we go. All right, the first pitch from Powell to Bonds. And this is going to be deep in the right field corner. Mondesi will run over and grab that one for the first out. If any parks are wrong, I apologize. I did not have time this evening to go through before pregame to get the ballparks correct. Hopefully, we're going to be good to go there. But uh, if anything is incorrect, my apologies uh, ahead of time. All right. Next at the plate is going to be Curtis Granderson, who's batting 250 this season. Forgot to talk about Barry Bonds. Uh, we'll get Barry Bonds when he comes back up. Oh, a hard shot down right, uh, right down the right field line to the corner and to the wall. Granderson will round first. Mondesi gives chase. He's going to... Uh, Granderson's heading to third. The throw from Mondesi to third. <laughs> not in time. Granderson's under the tag for the triple. All right. That brings Matt Williams to the plate. Matt Williams batting a, only a 161 for the season. Has that runner on third. Curtis Granderson standing on three. One out. Here's the one-two pitch, strike three. and he goes down on strikes. A big swing and a miss there for Williams with that scoring run right there on third base. That'll bring up Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey is batting a 187 this season. Here's the pitch, and he goes down on strikes. So two big strikeouts there to end that inning with that runner on third after hitting that triple. We're going to take a look at, uh, excuse me, the Sharks' uh, starting lineup. Leading off will be Willie Wilson. Bobby Richardson will be batting second. Batting third, Raul Mondesi. Batting fourth, Jose Canseco. Batting fifth, Tim Wallach. Batting sixth, Mitchell Page. Paul Canerco will be batting seventh. Marty Marion, eighth. Ray Schock will be batting ninth. For the mid-Michigan defense, we've got Barry Bonds in left field, Curtis Granderson in center field, and Willie McGee in right field. Miguel Cabrera be the first baseman. Lou Whitaker, second base. Alan Trammell be shortstop. At third would be Matt Williams. And behind the plate catching, Ivan Pudge Rodriguez. He'll be catching for Ernie Broglio, who's has three games started, 14 in innings pitched. He's allowed 10 hits, three earned runs. All three of those were home runs. Eight walks, 13 strikeouts. He's got a 193 ERA. Apparently, if he gives up a hit, it's going to be a long one. Willie Wilson will lead off for the Sharks. The pitch. And he tries to bunt his way on to to base that doesn't work. Williams will come up from third to field that one and make the throw in time over to Whitaker, who's covering the plate for the first out. That brings up Bobby Richardson. Bobby Richardson batting 278 in the season for St. Pete. One-two pitch, three. and he goes down on strike. So there's the first strikeout for Ernie Bruglio. 
Paul uh, Raul Mondesi comes up to the plate, batting 267 this season. And this is going to get, oh, a liner to second base. Whitaker makes a great play to get to that ball and make that second out. What a play by Richardson. That would have been an easy hit if he didn't get to that in time. We now see Jack, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, Miguel Cabrera, the hard-hitting Miguel Cabrera. He comes up batting a 303. He's got four home runs so far this season. Here's the pitch to Cabrera. A grounder to Wallach at third. He fires over to Canerco. That's the third out. We go to the top of two. All right. Leading off for the th uh, for the Thrillers, the Mid-Michigan Thrillers, is going to be Lou Whitaker. Lou Whitaker, who's batting 207 so far this season. Seen some low hitting averages, batting averages for Mid-Michigan so far. They're going to need to pick that up if they want to continue to win. But this is going to be a grounder to Richardson in second. Canerco makes the grab from the throw for the first out. Allen, our, our favorite Allen treadmill, Tremel, Tremel, comes up to the, uh, the plate, batting a, again a 147 average, very low. Here's the pitch from Powell, and he bunts his way on, and he makes that. that he's he's going to be safe. So, Shock unable to get to that and make the throw in time. Tremel reaches base on a bunt. I guess if you're not hitting well, try and bunt your way on whatever gets you there. We Willie McGee comes up to the plate. He's batting 250 this season. No RBIs. Actually, only has four at bats. So he's looking here to see what he can do with an on the first pitch. Tremel is off and running. Oh, it's a bad throw from Shock of all people out in the center field. Tremel around second makes it all the way to three. That's the stolen base number three for Tremel this season. So Ray Shock who uh, hit that home run last night, makes a throwing error, a bad throwing error to allow another runner at third base for mid-Michigan with only with two outs. So McGee trying to get in that RBI and put some points on the board early. Here's a big fly ball to center field. William Wilson will get back to that one, makes the grab for the third out. So one hit, no runs, and there was one error, that throwing error, on the steal. Okay, for St. Pete, we're going to see Canseco, Wallach, and Page. Jose Canseco, he's only batting a 160 this season. He has five home runs so far this year. Here's the pitch. This is going to get into left field as a liner to Bonds. He'll make a great play on that one. Running, running uh, catch on that one for the first out. Tim Wallach batting 232. He's got five home runs as well this so far this season. Here's the pitch to Wallach. This is going to be a grounder to Whitaker. He fires over to Cabrera. That's a second out. Mitchell Page. Mitchell Page is making his first appearance this season. He has no plate appearances so far this year. And from Boglio, here's the pitch to Rodriguez. I'm sorry, to Page. And it's a liner to Trammell for the third out. So we go to the bottom, uh, top of three, rather, excuse me, the top of three, uh, where the Thrillers will see batters nine, one, and two. That's going to be Ivan Rodriguez. Ivan Rodriguez only batting 154 this season. No home runs. And he goes down on strikes. So Powell got him swinging on that for the first out that brings up Barry Bonds Barry Bonds who's also only batting a 186 this season not really sure what's going on with the bats here for mid Michigan but uh, they're gonna have to pick those averages up if they plan on they're only a few games out of first place in that division they're gonna get need to get these bats alive to make up that distance all right from Powell to Bonds and this is a high fly ball in the right field. Mondesi back to his right. He'll make the grab for the second out. Curtis Granderson will come up. Come up. He's over. Uh, he's one for one. Excuse me. He's one for one. He lined that triple down that first baseline. His last at bat. Facing two outs. This is going to be a grounder to Marionette short. He'll fire to Canerco for the third out. No hits and no runs. No errors. One, two, three. Go the thrillers. We go to the bottom of three. We'll see Canerco, Marion, and Shock for St. Pete. Paul Canerco batting 266. 
Here's the pitch to Canargo. This is going to go foul down the third baseline. He'll get another chance at this. He's back facing the 0-2 pitch. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Canargo. He goes down on strikes. So, Broglio, that's his second strikeout of the game. Now faces off against Marty Marion. Marty Marion batting 231. He has six RBIs so far this season. And this is going to get into center field for a base hit. Marion tried to hoof it out for a double, and he makes it in time. Double number seven on the season for Marion. Marty Marion. So that brings up the hard-hitting home run king, Ray Schalk. With that runner on two and only one out. Here's a pay. Ray Shock has a 149 average. Uh, he's got 10 hits, but one of those is a home run. So 10% of his hits so far are home runs. Here's the pitch to Shock. But he goes down swinging for the second out. We go back to the top of the order for St. Pete where Willie Wilson comes in. 0 for 1 in the game. Here's the pitch to Wilson. And this is going to get into right field for a single. Marion around third. And McGee does not fire home. So Wilson, I'm sorry, uh, Marion rather, gets gets the first run, draws first blood. Sharks now up, one nothing. All right, that brings up Bobby Richardson with a man at first. And two outs. Bobby Richardson, two, uh, he's 0 for 1 so far in this game. Wilson's taken off. Here's a throw from Pudge. And not in time. Wilson gets there for a stolen base. That's his 10th stolen base, by the way, for the year. Richardson on the – still waiting. Uh, they, I'm sorry. He's got one a 1-0 count so far. Wilson taking a big lead off a second. Is he going to be brave enough to steal third? Well, he's, oh, off, cool. he's off and running. Take your base. But Richardson's going to get walked. Wilson will remain at second. And Raul Mondesi comes up, batting 264. He's 0 for 1 so far in the game. And this is going to be a high fly ball in the center field. Granderson to his left. He'll make the grab. That's the third out. One run off of those two hits. No errors. We go to the top of four. For the Thrillers, we're going to see Williams, Tomei, and Cabrera. At Williams 0 for 3, 1. 3. Goes down on strike, so Powell with his fourth strike out of the evening. Jim Tomey digs in. He's 0 for 1 so far in the game. And this is going to be a fly ball to right field. Mondesi to the foul line. Oh, my goodness, he bobbles it, but he was able to hold on to it and make the grab. Looked like he was going to drop it, but he grabs it, and that's the second out. What a nice recovery there to make that grab and make that second out. Miguel Cabrera. Has those four home runs in the season. 0 for 1 tonight. 299 average. So he's one of the better hitters on this team so far this season. This is going to be into center field. The grab is made. We go to the bottom of four. No runs, no hits. The thrillers go down 1, 2, 3. For St. Pete, we're going to see Canseco, Wallach, and Page. Jose Canseco, 0 for 1 so far. Pitching and Seiko, and he goes down on strikes. So we're getting a little bit of a pitching duel going on here. That's the fourth strikeout so far for Ernie Broglio. Now facing off against Tim Wallach, who's 0 for 1 so far in this game. And this is going to be a grounder to Trammell at first. Treadmill throws over to one. Cabrera makes the grab. That's the second out. That'll bring up. Page, Mitchell Page, 0 for 1. He had his first at-bat in this game, his last at-bat. Looking to get some kind of hit going at some point. This is going to be a, ball. Oh, a foul, foul ball down first baseline. Looked like Cabrera was going to get to that, but he didn't make it in time. I'm sorry, he did make that in time. So Cabrera on a hard shot in foul line on foul territory is able to get to that and make the out. So that'll take us to Page. Am I missing something here? That was Wallach, right? We got Mitchell Page up. He's also... Okay, I'm sorry. I must have missed something somewhere. But uh, anyways, it's two outs and we're facing Mitchell Strike Page. Three. And he goes down on strikes. I apologize. I got a little uh, perplexed there on something. Okay, so no runs and no hits for the Sharks. We go to the top of five. 
Whitaker, Trammell, and McGee. Trammell. Whitaker looking for the first. He's a one-two pitch to Whitaker, and he goes down on strike. So there's the fifth strikeout for Powell. Big pitcher's duel. So far, there's been a total of four hits, two for each team. Allen, the treadmill's up. He'll take the pitch. He is one for one. He goes down on strikes. That's two strikeouts in a row for Powell. Powell with his sixth strikeout already this game. Here in the top of five. Now, he'll see Willie McGee. Willie Willie McGee looking for the pitch. Here it comes. And a pop-up towards second base. Marion will come over, get underneath that one, make the third out. So the mid-Michigan goes down again. One, two, three. And we go to the bottom of five where we'll see Canerco, Marion, and Shock for St. Pete. Paul Canerco, 0 for 1 tonight. There's the 2-2 pitch and a hard grounder to Williams. He fires across the diamond. Cabrera loved that for the first out. Marty Marion, he is 1 for 1. He doubled to left center. And this is going to be a hard shot to the corner down the first baseline. Marion around one. McGee's going to give chase to the ball. Oh, it's going to, and McGee fires to second. It's going to be a close play. But he's in there safely. That's his eighth double of the season, his second already of the day. They're going to chalk up a poor play to Miguel for Miguel uh, Cabrera. Thought they could have gotten to that one, but that was a hard shot, so... If he had gotten to that, it probably would have been a web gem or something. That brings up Ray Shock with that runner on two and one out. And we all know Shock likes to hit those home runs and knock in those RBIs. So here it comes. And this is deep into right field. But over McGee's head, he's unable to get to it. So Shock does knock in that RBI. And it gets a double. So once again, Shock showing his batting power. Here in this game, Willie Wilson, the top of the lineup for St. Pete with one out and Shock standing on uh, second. Willie Wilson is one for two so far in this game. Here's the pitch. He goes down on strike. So Richardson will come up facing two outs with the runner on two. Richardson's 0 for one. One pitch and he's going to draw the free pass. So now runners on first and second. Mondesi with two outs, trying to drive in some more runs, trying to get some more insurance runs here for the Sharks. He goes down on strike. So once again, the pitcher pitchers are showing that they've got some strength in this game, trying to keep this a pitcher's duel. It is a low-scoring game going into six. It's 2 nothing. We're going to see batters 9-1-2 and two for mid-Michigan. That's going to be Ivan Rodriguez leading off this half inning. He is 0 for 1 here in the top of 6. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and Rodriguez goes down. So that's the seventh strikeout here through the top of 6 for Powell. So Jack Powell with seven strikeouts, no walks yet. And is only allowed uh, a couple of hits. So he's doing fantastic. To Bonds, Bonds gets the walk. So that's the first walk of the game for Powell. What's the speedy Bonds on first? As Curtis Granderson strolls to the plate. Granderson is one for two. He grounded a short his last at bat. Bonds taking a big lead. Powell looking at him from the stretch. Bonds is off and running. It's a hit and run. This is going to be into deep center field. Wilson back to make the grab near the track. Bonds has to come back to first. That'll be the second out. That brings up Matt Williams, who's 0 for 2 tonight. Struggling through the season with that 157 average. And he goes down on strike. So his struggles continue as mid-Michigan ends their inning with no hits and no runs. But that runner left on base still trailing by two here in the bottom six. Jose Canseco 0 for 2. There's the pitch. And he gets walked. So we're seeing a couple of walks here in this inning. That brings up Tim Wallach. He is 0 for 2 as well so far in the game. Canseco taking a nice, decent lead. And Bruglio fires over to 1, but Canseco gets back in time. 
Still taking a nice lead over there as Wallach's waiting for his first pitch at this preference. It's a grounder to travel. He throws over to Whitaker. He fires over to one. It's the double play. Down goes two batters. So St. Pete now with Mitchell Page coming up facing two stri- uh, two outs and no runners on base. And the pitch to Page. It's a grounder to Cabrera. He'll pick it up. He'll run it to the bag himself. That's the third out. We go to the top of seven. The score, two, nothing. Sharks over mid-Michigan. For mid-Michigan, we're going to see Tomei, Cabrera, and Whitaker make plate appearances this half of the inning. Tomei gets a walk. Powell now with two walks in the game, but eight strikeouts. Faces off against Cabrera. Runner on first. Tomei not taking a big lead. Doesn't appear to be going anywhere. Powell keeping him close from the stretch. And this gets past Shock. And Tomei is off to second. That's a passed ball on Ray Shock. So Tomei now is second with no outs. The Thrillers trying to close up this gap, trailing by two. If they can get Tomei in, that'll cut that lead in half. And this is a hard shot in the left field for Cabrera for a single. Tomei will advance to third. Runners at the corners. No outs. And Lou Whitaker up to bat. Lou Whitaker's 0 for 2. Rounded to second and struck out so far in this game. Here's the pitch to Whitaker. And this is a high fly ball to Mondes. He doesn't really have to move. He'll catch that. Tomei will tag. No throw from right field. It just gets back into Richardson to hold Cabrera at one. But the Thrillers cut that lead in half, now trailing by one. That brings up the treadmill. He's one for two tonight. He bunted for a single in the second, then struck out. Can he get another RBI tonight? That's what he's looking for here with that runner on one. And this is going to be a deep fly ball in the left field. Oh, and it is over the wall. So a two RBI shot for Allen, the treadmill. That is home run number three for the season, 364 feet. And just like that, mid-Michigan here in the top of seven takes a one-run lead, now leading three to two. Willie McGee comes up for the Thrillers. He's 0 for 2. Here's the pitch. And he goes down on strikes. That's the ninth strikeout now for Powell. Ivan Rodriguez steps up with those two outs. He is batting ninth in the lineup. 0 for 2 tonight from Powell. Good ball. And Rodriguez gets popped. So I wonder if he took that one for that home run. Maybe Powell said he was going to give somebody a little punishment for that home, that two RBI home run that gave them the lead. But that's going to bring up Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds 0 for 2. He has four home runs this season and 10 RBIs, but his average is only a 184 so far this year. Here's the pitch. And Bonds goes down on strikes for the third out. We go to the seventh inning stretch. All right, so we are on the bottom of seven. Uh, Thrillers went, scored three runs on two hits. There were no errors committed by St. Pete, who now trailed by one after leading through the first full, six full innings. Uh, we have another dead guy again over here. This park is known for that. Uh, okay, so they're going to face off against, uh, Brogo is going to face off against Canerco, who's going to be batting in the seventh spot, followed by Marion, and then Shock. To Canerco, and this is going to be a grounder to Whitaker at second. He'll fire over to Cabrera, who gloves that easily for the first out. Marty Marion comes up. He's batting two for two tonight, doubled in the third, and then doubled in the fifth. So with two doubles so far in the night, he fires to Marion, and this is going to be a grounder. Treadmill comes up and picks that up and throws it over to Cabrera. That's the second out. And that brings up 
hammering Ray Shock. The home run last night and an RBI so far tonight. He's like one of the lead batters for this team right now. One for two this evening. Here's the pitch to Shock. Whoa, whoa. And he'll get walked. Uh, Brugler says, hey, you know what? I don't want to mess with him. He's too hard, or too good of a hitter. We'll just put him on base. I'll face off against Wilson. So Wilson is one for three this evening. Comes up with two outs in that runner on first. Here's the pitch to Wilson. Shock is off. And this is going to be a nice shot in the right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Shock can get all the way to three. Wilson will hold it one. So now St. Pete. Runners on the corners has that tying run right there on three for Bobby Richardson. Bobby Richardson's 0 for 1. He struck out in the first, then he got walked twice. And we're going to wait for the pitch from up. Oh, and Ernie's going to fire over to one. But Wilson gets back in time. Wilson's got a very big lead, being very aggressive on first base as Bobby Richardson is waiting for his first pitch. And here it comes, and this is going to be a grounder to Cabrera. He's going to make the out, and that's going to end the, that inning. So the threat is over as we go in the top of eight. One hit, no runs, and no errors. Mid-Michigan thrillers still lead the St. Pete Sharks by one. We're going to see batters two, three, and four for Mid-Michigan. That's going to be Curtis Granderson leading this off. He is one for three this evening. And here's the pitch to Granderson. And this is going to be a hard shot in the right field for a single. Past Richardson at second. So Granderson now at first as Matt Williams comes up. 0 for 3 this evening. The pitch. And this is going to be a high fly ball left field. Page makes a couple steps to his right to make that grab. Granderson just retreats back to one. He's not going anywhere on that. Jim Tomey. 0 for 2. The pitch to Tomey. He goes down on strikes. That's 11 strikeouts today for Jack Powell here through the top of eight. So Jack Powell with 103 pitches so far in this game has struck out 11, walked two. He has given up five hits, one being that big home run that allowed the Thrillers to take the lead. But still looking pretty good on that mound, hoping to get a win here. And they're going to replace Cabrera with Darren Lewis. Whoa, so whoa. Darren Lewis will draw the walk from Powell. That's only his third walk of the evening that he's that he's issued. Runners on first and second for the Thrillers as Lou Whitaker comes up to the plate. Here's the pitch whoa, to Whitaker. Whoa. And he'll get walked. So Powell starting to lose a little bit here. Has done a great job of striking batters out. Now has walked two in a row to fill up the bases as the treadmill comes up. And this could be bad news for Powell because that the, tre the treadmill, he keeps on going and going. Here it comes. Shock's going to go out and talk to Powell. And it's going to be a fly ball in the right field. Mondesi comes up and to his right to grab that one. He makes the grab for the third out. So St. Pete breathes a sigh of relief. For that third out as bases were loaded. We go to the bottom of eight. And thanks to the last out, the Sharks are still only trailing by one. We'll see batters three, four, and five for St. Pete. That's going to be Raul Mondesi leading it off. 0 for 3 this evening. Line to second, fly to deep right, and then struck out. Here's the pitch Strike to Mondesi. Three. He goes yeah. down on strike. So another great pitching performance over here by Ernie Broglio. He struck out eight and walked four so far. Given up five hits himself. And to Conseco. And Conseco gets popped. Wow. So Conseco gets hit by pitch. That's the second hit by pitch we've seen this evening. Perhaps that was a uh, little retaliation for Rodriguez getting plunked. So St. Pete now only has one out and a runner on first. Tim Wallach will come up. Tim Wallach 0 for 3, looking to get something going. Oh, and they're going to bring in Dale Long to pinch hit for Tim Wallach. They're going to throw over to five. They're going to fire over to one. Can say go back in time. So that's going to bring up Dale Long to pinch hit. Dale Long 
He's been in 16 games so far this this year. Has made uh, 13 at bats and has one hit for that. He's also been walked once. Waiting for the pitch. Here's the pitch. It's a one-two pitch, play. and he goes down on strikes. I have to wonder about that pinch hit. I think I would have rather taken my chances with. Uh, oh, who am I to question these manager calls? They make some. They make some weird calls sometimes, but uh, ours is not to question why. Mitchell Page with two outs comes up. That runner on first. That tying run on one. Oh, for three for Page. Here's the one-two pitch. A grounder to Scott. He'll pick it up. Carry it back to the bag himself at one. And that'll be the third out. We go to the top of nine. The Thrillers are going to see batters eight, nine, and one. Willie McGee. Willie McGee is 0 for 3 this evening. Struck out his last at bat. And this is going to be a fly ball into right field. Mondesi to his right. He'll make the grab. That's the first out. Ivan Rodriguez 0 for 2 tonight. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. And this is going to be a nice shot in the center field over the second base. Marion couldn't get to it in time. I'm going to try say it was a poor play. Not an error. It's a base hit for sure for Rodriguez. But Marion possibly just went the wrong way there on that hit. Allowed that ball to get out in the center field. So the Thrillers, who already lead by one, now have a insurance run standing there on first as Barry Bonds comes up to the plate. Barry Bonds is 0 for 3 so far. Here's the pitch to Bonds. This is going to get in the right field. Past Richardson at second. Mondesi will pick it up, throw it back to Richardson. Rodriguez will hold it two. So the thriller is down with runners on first and second as Curtis Granderson. Curtis Granderson's two for four. His two hits was a triple in the first. And then he grounded a single in the eighth. So now looking to help add some runs to this lead. With runners on first and second and only one out. Here's the pitch to Granderson. And this is going to get into right field. Mondesi will come up and grab that one. Rodriguez does not round third. The third base coach holds him up. Granderson gets his third hit of the day. Base is now fully loaded here for Powell. Who needs to get himself out of this one. Been pitching a pretty good game with that 11 strikeout so far. Need, he got, was able to get out of the last inning with bases loaded. Can he do it again with only one out? And here's the pitch to Williams, and he strikes him out. So that is going to help. That's uh, the 12th strikeout by Jack Powell in this game. Now with those bases loaded, it doesn't seem as dangerous because there's two outs. And he'll face off against Jim Tomey, who's only batting on 179 this season and is 0 for 3 in this game. He struck out his last at bat. So Ken Powell get himself out of another big jam. Here's the pitch to Tomei. This is going to get down into center field for a single. That's going to going to score one. Bonds around third. He's coming home. So Tomei with two RBI single. Powell not able to get himself out of that one. The Thrillers now lead by three. It's five to two here in the top of nine. George Scott. Not the actor. Comes up to the plate. This is only his uh, third at bat this season. But he's got a 500 average. Of course, that's off of two at bats. One of those was a hit. And that's it. They're going to call it. Jack Powell's off the mound. They're bringing Jim Johnson in from the bullpen. So Jim Johnson will come in. He's played in four games so far this season. Pitched five and two-thirds inning. Has five hits, only one earned run, two walks, six strikeouts. He's going to try and get them out of this inning and see if mid-Michigan, I'm sorry, see if St. Pete can score some runs to get back into this game. But this, oh, it's a nice shot to second. Marion will come over and grab that ball. It looked like it was going to get past second, and but he get, picks it up, fires the first for that third out. So that was two runs off of four hits for the Thrillers. As we go to the bottom of nine, the Sharks need three runs to tie it. And they only have three outs left to do it. So Paul Konerka, who's 0 for 3, will face off. Ernie Brugler is still on the mound with 138 pitches. He's going to keep going. This is going to be a bounder to Williams at third. He'll fire over to Scott. That's the first out. St. Pete now to the, down to the last two outs. Marion 
comes up. Marion doubled to left center in the third and doubled off the wall in the fifth. So he has two doubles. Can he get enough, something else going here to keep keep this thing going? No, this could be a grounder back to the pitcher's mound. Ernie Brugley will pick that one up and fire over to one to get the second out. That brings up Ray Shock. Well, if anybody can get a run back for St. Pete, it's Hammer and Ray Shock. Hard hitting Ray Shock. Let's see, can he get them back? At least one run back. The pitch to Shock. Whoa, whoa. And again, they say, uh, we're not going to pitch to him. We're going to pitch around him. And he draws his second walk in a row. That Willie Wilson now back to the top of the lineup for St. Pete will come in with that runner on one. They need three. So they need a base runner here. And here's the pitch to Wilson. And this is deep fly ball in their left, right center. But McGee is able to get to that near the track. That's the third out. The game ends. Mid-Michigan five, Sharks two. Let's go to the box score. All right. Mid-Michigan had nine hits and five runs, no errors. St. Pete had five hits, two runs, one error. That one error did not result in a score. So that did not affect the score. Granderson went three for five with a triple. Uh, the tre Allen, the treadmill, went two for four with one home run. Over for the St. Pete Sharks, Wilson went two for five. Marion went two for four. And Shock with that RBI double, one for two. Ernie Ruglio had nine innings pitched, five hits, two runs, both earned. Five walks, nine strikeouts. For St. Pete, Powell had went eight and two-thirds, nine hits, five runs, all five earned, one home run, four walks, and an amazing 12 strikeouts in the game. Johnson had to come in for a third of an inning, gave up no hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Game MVP goes to Ernie Broglio, who had a great pitching performance tonight. So, great job. That was a... Less of a pitcher's duel than it looked like it was going to be. Uh, but a 5-2 game, that was a good game until mid-Michigan broke it open there at the end. Now we go off to the next game. And I believe we have both owners in the park. Uh, Slashed is in. Welcome, Slash. You got to see your game, your team win. Steve is here. So Steve and Big Clue are here to watch their game being played. World's Worst is here. Welcome by. Uh, Beatles, welcome, if you're still here. Uh, and off we go for the Lehigh at Liverpool. Now, I'm going to try. Uh, uh, I don't have any favorites in this game. <coughs> but um, so I'm not going to. Uh, oh, excuse me. That don't sneeze there. Uh, you know, I don't really care who wins this one. <coughs> but um, yeah, let's go. Oh, whoa, I don't think we can play on this field. This is what. <laughs> okay, we're definitely going to have to change this. All right. I don't know how this, how the heck this picture got up there. But we're changing this one. I don't think we're going to be playing on this field. But off we go. We're at the Polo Grounds. Uh, tonight's game between Lehigh and Liverpool. Mordecai Brown, oh, I know him very well, takes the mound for Lehigh. He's got two starts in the year and is 2-0 and with an ERA of zero. He's got two shutouts in his two appearances when he was with Chico's. It's his first start against Liverpool. He'll be opposed by Deacon Philippe for Liverpool. He's made five starts on the year, and he's 1-4 and four with an ERA of 577. It's his first start against Lehigh. It's 71 degrees, and we have a 50% chance of rain. So we'll see if we can go the distance. And uh, we got to get rid of this picture from 1892 that we got up here. I'm sorry. I hate doing this in the middle of a game. But, uh, yeah, that's just not going to work. And, oops, that's the wrong one. We have to go to uh, options. Oops. All right. Where am I at here? Is it under display? Is it park layout under display? No, it's not there. 
if we don't find this, we're going to go with this here in a minute. Uh, is it set up? Oh, here we go. Park image. All right. So we're at the polo grounds. Let's see if we can find one of Mike's polo grounds images. There we go. And uh, there we go. Polo grounds, 1890. That's not going to put it in there, is it? Oh, that's what I needed to do. There we go. Yes. Yes. And yes. All right. Now, we may have to set this up. Yes, we are going to have to set this up. Again, I apologize. Like I said, I did not have time to go through and get all of this um, beforehand. I hate doing this live broadcast, especially when my mouse doesn't want to cooperate. All right. Come on now. There we go. All right. Let's reset this. just going to get him close to so we can get this thing going i'm not going to sit here and mess around with this everybody gets to see me set up a beautiful picture though by mike silva i don't know if mike silva's here but mike silva's ballparks are always nice and almost always nicer than the real pictures that we get especially that picture i have no idea where that thing came from that was interesting to say the least let's get center field out there instead of on top of second all right fielders playing first base all right there we go All right, and the rest of it's just going to have to go because I want to get this game going. I know everybody wants to see these two teams play, so let's get this on. Exactly, David. I'm falling asleep trying to set it up myself. I don't blame you. All right, let's take a look at the lineup. For the Lehigh Lizards, who come in leading off, Craig B uh, Biggio is batting second. Cecil Cooper, Jeff Bagwell batting third. Left fielder, George Foster batting fourth. Center fielder, Willie Mays batting fifth. In the sixth spot will be Ken Caminiti. Caminiti. Dixie Walker batting seventh. Russell Martin batting eighth. Dave Concepcion rounds out. The lineup in the ninth spot for the Liverpool defense. We're going to have Jeff Heath in left field, Brett Butler in center field, Jackie Jensen in right field. On first base, Joey Votto. Joe Morgan will be at second base. Ozzie Smith at shortstop. At third is Chipper Jones. Mike Piazza will be catching behind the plate tonight. And he'll be catching Deacon Philippe who's got five games started, 39 innings pitched, 52 hits, 25 earned runs, six home runs, eight walks, 26 strikeouts, 577 ERA. Off we go. The first batter, Craig Biggio. He comes in, batting 290 on the season. And... Okay, what do we... There it comes. And he struck out, but it's a drop third strike. But Piazza fires over to Votto at first for the first out. So we'll mark that as a strikeout and an assist from Piazza. That'll bring up Cecil Cooper. Cecil Cooper batting 274. 
Here's the pitch from the up. Oh, and this is getting a right field, a grounder in the right field. And Cooper gets his first single of the night. And that, with one out, that brings up Jeff Bagwell. Jeff Bagwell batting 227, has 16 RBIs and four home runs. Take the pitch. Cooper's off and running. The throw from Piazza to Morgan at second. Not in time. That's stolen base number one for Cecil Cooper. Bagwell with a 1-0 pitch. The stretch. And a fly ball into center field. Butler to his left. He makes the grab. Cooper retreats back to second. Then he tags and runs and fires to third. <laughs> Cooper under the tag. Beautiful throw from Butler, but not in time. Cooper makes it to third safely. George Foster comes up with two outs and that runner on three. George Foster batting 248. he He's got six home runs this season, 16 RBIs. 1-1 one, one pitch to Foster, and this is a fly ball into center field. Butler tracks to his right, gets under that on the running catch to make the third out. So one hit for the Lizards, no runs, no errors committed by Liverpool. We go to the bottom of one for the Liverpool Baseball Club. Brett Butler will lead it off. Dan Brothers will be batting second. Chipper Jones will be batting third. Batting fourth and in cleanup will be Jeff Heath. Joey Votto in the fifth spot. Joe Morgan in the sixth spot. Batting seventh, Jackie Jensen. Batting eighth, Mike Piazza. And rounding out the lineup for Liverpool will be Ozzie Smith. The Lehigh defense will be George Foster in left field, Willie Mays in center field, Dixie Walker in right field. Cecil Cooper will be at first base. Craig Biggio will be second base. Dave Concepcion, shortstop. Ken Caminiti will be batting, I'm sorry, will be playing third base. Russell Martin will be behind the plate catching, and he'll be catching for Mordecai Brown. Mordecai three-finger Brown, who's got two game starts this season, 18 innings pitched, only seven hits, no earned runs. Five walks, 19 strikeouts. So Lehigh picks up Brown on a trade. He's going to see him pitch for the first time. And here's the pitch to Butler. Butler with a hard shot down the right set, right uh, field line. Gets to the wall. Butler around first to make it to second. He's on his way to third. Walker will fire. It's going to be a play at third. Hey. Butler slides, and he's in for his fourth triple of the season. So Liverpool with a leadoff triple by Butler. And that brings up Dan Brothers, who is batting 216 this season. He only has two RBIs, but he's got a great chance of knocking in an extra one here. Here's the pitch. And this is going to be a high fly ball into right field, and it's down. So Brothers does get that RBI single. And Liverpool, just like that, takes the lead, gets the first run of the game. No outs. Runner on first. Chipper Jones comes up. Chipper Jones batting 250. He's got 11 RBIs. Dan Brothers still over there on first. He's taken a somewhat decent lead. Brown will watch him. From the stretch, Brown delivers. Brothers off and running. And he's... Out. He's caught stealing second. It was a double play. Okay, I'm not really sure how that play happened. Let's see if we can figure this one out. All right. Jones struck out. Okay, Jones struck out, and Brother Brothers was caught stealing second for the second out. So, double play on a strikeout there. Interesting. That'll bring up Jeff Heath. Jeff Heath batting 250 this season. He's got four home runs so far. And this is going to be a high fly ball, and this is gone. Jeff Heath with a solo shot home run over right center field wall, 414 feet. Wow, what a shot by Jeff Heath over that high wall there in right center field. That ball was shot into the stratosphere. The uh, Liverpool Baseball Club. Now leads 2 nothing. By the way, if anybody wants to know that's coming in, why they're called the Baseball Club, well, their last name was very racist, and they were forced to change it to the Baseball Club until they find another one. All right, so we're going to see Joey Votto come up to the plate. He's batting 256. 
Oh, that's a joke, by the way. But anybody's watching this later. That's just a joke. Uh, Joey Votto batting 256, seven home runs this season. I don't deliver to Votto and strike him out to end the inning, but Liverpool scored three hits. I'm sorry, two runs rather off of those three hits. No errors were committed by the Lizards. For the Lizards, we're going to see Mays, Caminiti, and Walker Mays, Willie Mays, batting 206 this season and five home runs. Here's the pitch. And this is going to be a hard shot in the left field. That'll single there for Mays. So the Lizards with a runner on one and no outs. Poor play by Chipper Jones. They thought, looked like he could have gotten to that ball, but he didn't make the right play. But Mays credited with that single. All right, Ken Caminiti comes in. He's batting 155 this season. Has four RBIs. And here's the pitch. And this is going to be a high pop-up into foul territory. Votto gives chase. Pull ball! But not in time. He gets into the stands. Somebody's taking home a souvenir. Mays will stand on first, but he's taking a big lead. Two balls, two strikes on Caminiti. Pitch. And this is going to be a high fly ball into center field. Butler will get to that one. That's the first out. He fires back. Mays holds it one. Dixie Walker batting 333 this season. Nice little average there for him so far through April and then the part of May. He's got one RBI. No home runs. Here is the first pitch from Walker. Mays is off and running. <laughs> Piazza fires to Smith, but... Willie Mays under that tag. Stolen base number four on the season for Willie Mays. So now the Lizards have that runner on second with one out. And Dixie Walker waiting for the second pitch. So no one count. And it's a grounder into left field. It gets through the infield. Heath will come up, make the play. But Mays will round third. The speedy Mays gets it all the way home. On that grounder by Walker. So it's RBI single for Walker. As Russell Martin comes up to the plate. He's 183 this season. With eight RBIs. Walker taking a very big lead there on one. A leap from the stretch. And this is going to be a liner to Smith. Ozzie Smith makes that grab for the second out. So the Lizards was able have been able to cut this lead in half. With that RBI driving Mays in. Still trailing by one as Dave Concepcion, the ninth batter for the Lizards, comes up. Batting 253 this season. This was another pickup on a trade from Chico's. To Concepcion, this is a high fly ball into right field. Jensen gets under that one. Concepcion is out. That'll be the third out. We go to the bottom of two. Got one. Uh, the Lizards scored one run off of those two hits. No errors committed by Liverpool. For Liverpool, we're going to see Joe Morgan, Jensen, and Piazza all make appearances. Joe Morgan batting 231 this season. Here's the 3 0 pitch, whoa, whoa. and he gets a free pass from Brown. So Mordecai Brown, who had two shutouts coming into this game, has already blown that by giving up two runs in this game but still having a good season overall we'll see how this game continues as he faces off against Jackie Jensen Jackie Jensen batting 182 has 11 RBIs and four home runs Joe Morgan takes a big lead off of first base Brown will look at him and off goes Joe Morgan oh they're not even gonna make the throw Joe Morgan just too fast the Lizards aren't even gonna make the play stolen base number four for Joe Morgan Jackie Jensen with a no one pitch runner on two, no outs. Here's the pitch to Jensen whoa, whoa. and he'll get walked. So Brown walked two now also has two strikeouts. We'll face off against Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza coming in at a 253 average, two home runs, eight RBIs. Brown fires to Piazza and this is going to be a fly ball into left field. Foster at the uh, foul line will catch that Morgan tags. <laughs> And to third, Foster makes the throw to Caminiti, who makes gets the tag down. Foster caught trying to get to three after the tag. That's going to be two outs for Liverpool, just like that. 
off of that deep fly ball down the left field line. Jensen does get to second, however, and that brings up Ozzie Smith, who's batting ninth in the lineup for Liverpool. He's got an 076 average for uh, a one RBI, excuse me, one RBI in the season. Ozzie Smith waits for the pitch from Brown. Jensen's off. It's a fly. Oh, a liner to Biggio at second who make that grab for the third out. We go to the top of three. No hits, no runs, no errors. One was left on base. And we are at the top of the batting order for the Lehigh Lizards. Craig Biggio, who's 0 for 1 so far, waits for the pitch from Philippe. And this is going to get into center field over second base. Biggio with his first hit of the night. That brings up Cecil Cooper. So this, both teams putting some hits up early here and getting base runners. Co uh, Cooper is one for one already tonight. Got a single in the first. Biggio's taking a nice lead there off of first. Philippe will keep take a look at him, but Biggio's not going anywhere. It's a bunt. So it's a sack bunt. Piazza fires over. Makes the out, gets the batter out on that sack bunt, but he does what he needs to do, and he advances that runner to two. Jeff Bagwell, 0 for 1. Here's the pitch to Bagwell, and he goes down on strikes. That's the second strikeout for Philippe. He's now going to face off against Joe Fa George Foster. George Foster's 0 for 1 this evening. He's made his trips around this league. He went from Chico's all the way over to Chicago. And then back over to Lehigh. The pitch to Foster. And it's a grounder to Smith. will come up and feel that one. It's going to be a close play at Boom. one. Foster is able to beat, beat that out and make it in in time. So Foster with an infield single. Biggio advances to three. So runners on the corners. That brings up Willie Mays, who's already one for one tonight. Grounded a single his last at bat. Runners at two, two outs, and Philippe will fire over to one, but Foster gets back in time, not taking as big of a lead now. From the stretch to Mays, and a fly ball into left field. This one's going to be high and deep, and it is gone. So Willie Mays gets a three RBI shot into left field, 297 feet, and the Lizards now lead Liverpool 4 to 2. And that brings up Ken Caminiti who's 0 for 1 so far in the game. Here's the pitch to Caminiti. And he goes down on strikes to end the inning, but not before the Lizards can score three, three runs off those three hits, including that 3 RBI shot by Willie Mays. For Liverpool, we're back to the top of the lineup. Brett Butler leads off. He's one for one tonight. He lined a triple down the first baseline. His first appearance. Here's the pitch to Butler. This is just going to be a bounder to Biggio at second, who picks it up, fires over to first, but not in time. So Butler with an infield single towards second base. Incredible. These players are getting a lot of infield hits here. That'll bring up Dan Brothers. Dan Brothers, who hit Bruthers. Brothers singled over second. And was able to allow the first score. Butler was able to score. So Butler in, on first, hoping to score again. Not taking a huge lead. Brown will keep his eye on him. And he fires. And this is going to be a high fly ball into right field. Walker gets to this one for the first out. Butler holds at one. Chipper Jones, 0 for 1 tonight. There's the pitch to Jones. Butler's off and running. Martin's going to fire to Concepcion. <laughs> Not in time. That's stolen base number four for Brett Butler. Chipper Jones with the 0-1 pitch. Butler at two. Jones with a shot. Oh, a liner to Biggio who makes the grab for the second out. The big liner. Looked like it might have gotten over his head, but he was able to right, stretch out and grab that one. So now the Liverpool Baseball Club has a runner on two. And Jeff Heath will come in. Well, Jeff Heath hit that solo homer. So if he's going to get another homer, now's the time to do it because that would tie the game up from Brown to Heath. 
And this one is very high and very deep. But Walker able to get to that one and make the play at the wall. I mean, he had to reach over and grab that and pull it back into the ballpark for the third out. As we go to the top of four, one hit for Liverpool, no runs. We're going to see Walker, Martin, and Concepcion for the Lizards. Dixie Walker is, for, uh, is one for one. Excuse me. He's one for one. He grounded a single in the second. Here's the pitch to Walker. And this is going to be a high fly ball in the right field. Jensen tracks to his right. He'll make the grab for the first out. Russell Martin in the eighth spot for the Lizards. Takes the pitch. And this is a pop-up to Ozzie Smith at short. He's under that one for the easy grab. That's two outs. Dave Concepcion is 0 for 1. He'll step in now, batting ninth in the lineup. Here's the pitch to Concepcion. He goes down on strike, so the Lizards go down 1, 2, 3. As we go off to the bottom of four here, no runs and no hits and no errors in that half of the inning. We're going to see Joey Votto, Morgan, and Jensen for Liverpool. Joey Votto's 0 for 1. Liverpool needs some base runners here. And this is going to, no, a liner, a hard liner to right field. Walker will make that grab for the first out. That brings up Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan was walked in the second. Here's the pitch to Morgan. High pop up into right field. Oh, this is not a high pop. This is gone. This was a shot by Joe Morgan. Looked like it was going to be a pop-up in the right field there, but it was hard hit and ended up going 264 feet just over that wall there in right field. And that brings Liverpool back within one. And that'll bring up Jensen, Jackie Jensen to the plate. He walked also in the second. And here's the pitch to Jensen. And this is going to be down the first baseline all the way to the wall. Jensen rounds first. And Walker will fire to two. Concepcion waiting for to make, try to make the tag. Not in time. That's the third double this season for Jackie Jensen. Mike Piazza with that runner on two and only one out. Liverpool trying to tie this game up. That tying run standing on two. Here's the pitch to Piazza. Mike three. And he goes down on strikes at the most inopportune time for Liverpool. Ozzie Smith, the ninth batter for Liverpool, comes up to the plate. Runner on two, two outs. And here's the pitch to Smith. And this is a fly ball into le shallow left. Foster will come up. Makes a sliding catch on that one for the third out. But the Lizards go down after scoring one run and off of two hits. We go to the top of five. Craig Biggio will lead this off for the Lizards. He is one for two tonight. Singled his last at bat in the third. Here's the pitch. And it's a bounder to Smith at short. He'll fire over to Votto for the first out. Up comes Cecil Cooper. Cecil Cooper, one for one. He grounded a single in the first. He had a sack bunt in the third, so... One one official at bat, that sack bunt. But he goes down on strikes this time, and that brings up Jeff Bagwell. Jeff Bagwell, who's 0 for 2. The 0 2 pitch, and a hard shot down third baseline this time to the wall. Heath will give chase. Bagwell rounds first, heads to two. The throw is only back to the cutoff man. Smith will grab that one. That's double number four this season for Jeff Bagwell. That brings up George Foster facing two outs with a runner on two. Lizards up by one. George Foster is one for two. Singled on the infield. His last appearance. But he goes down on strikes this time for the third out. And that'll end the inning. So there was one hit, but no runs for Lizards. No errors committed by Liverpool. We go off to the bottom of five. Butler, the leadoff batter, top of the lineup for Liverpool, steps up. He's two for two. Lined a triple and then singled in his two at-bats so far in this game. Can he keep that streak going? He cannot because he goes down 
on a called third strike. Thought that curve was out of the zone, but the umpire rung him up, and that's the first out. Dan Bruthers will come up to the plate, and he's one for two tonight. Pitch from Brown, and he goes down on strike. So Mordecai, three-finger Brown, strikes out two in a row to start off this inning. This half of the inning, I should say. That brings up Chipper Jones, who's 0 for 2. Jones, and he goes down. So, 1, 2, 3, go Liverpool to Mordecai Brown. Strikes out three in a row. There in the bottom of five. We go off to top of six. We're going to see Willie Mays lead this off. Willie Mays, 2 for 2 tonight, including a huge shot. Three RBIs in this game. There's the pitch to Mays, and this is going to be a liner to Smith. He's going to make the grab, but a diving grab, in fact, to get that. But he's injured himself on that play, and now he's out of the game. So a fantastic grab by Smith, but out on an injury. We'll see how long that how long he's out for. And that brings up, uh, we're going to see Buck Weaver come into play shortstop. All right, Ken Caminiti, he's 0 for 2 tonight. Here's the pitch, and this is going to be into right center field for a double, a stand-up double. He just strolls right into two there with that big hit all the way to the wall. So the Lizards with a runner on two, only one out. Brings up Dixie Walker, who's one for two. And this is going to be a fly ball to over Morgan's head at second. Jensen will re reach that one. Kamini holds it three. He does not round the bag and go home. Joe Morgan did not make a good play on that one. So now Lizards have runners on one and three. Only one out. And that brings up Russell Martin. Russell Martin is 0 for 2. Batting eighth in this lineup for the Lizards. Here's the pitch to Martin. And he goes down on strike. So a big strike out there for Deacon Philippe. Who now has two outs on the Lizards. And that brings up Dave Concepcion who's 0 for 2 tonight. Runners on the corners take their lead. Here's the pitch to Concepcion. It's a grounder to Weaver at short. He'll toss it underhand to Morgan at second for that third out. Two hits for the Lizards, but no runs. Two runners left on base. We go to the bottom of six. We're going to see Jeff Heath lead it off for Liverpool. Jeff Heath is one for two, including that because he hit that solo homer in the uh, first inning. And here's fly ball into center field. Mays to his left. He's under that for the first out. Joey Votto, 0 for 2. The pitch from Brown to Votto. And this is down the line in right field. Walker at the corner, just this side of the foul line to make that grab. That brings up Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan's 1 for 1. He hit a solo home, walked once, and then hit a solo homer. Down right field line. So the lefty Morgan facing off against Brown after his last at bat was a big home run. Here's the pitch. And this is going to be a line drive into right field for a single. So Morgan now with a walk, a single, and a home run. Morgan will stand on first as Jackie Jensen comes up to the plate. He is also one for one tonight. He walked in the second, then doubled a li uh, line to double, excuse me, line to double down the first baseline in the fourth. Morgan with a huge lead at one. Brown will fire over to one to try and pick off Morgan, but not in time. Morgan back. Morgan not giving up anything. He's still taking a huge lead at one. Brown delivers from the stretch. And he strikes Jensen out for the big third out to end the sixth inning. We go to the top of seventh where Lehigh Lizards lead the Liverpool Baseball Club 4-3. to three. Craig Biggio will lead this off for the Lizards. He is 1-3 for three so far tonight. And this is going to be a grounder back to the mound. Philippe comes off the mound, fires over to Votto for the first out. Cecil Cooper 1-2. for two. The 0-2 pitch. And a hard liner to Jones. He'll snag that one for the second out. And that brings up Je Jeff Bagwell. He's one for three tonight.
There's the pitch to Bagwell. And he goes down on strikes. We go to the seventh inning stretch. And the seventh inning stretch will last just a couple seconds longer. All right, so we're back from the stretch. As we go to the bottom of seven, the Lehigh Lizards, nine hits, four runs, no errors. The Liverpool Baseball Club, seven hits, three runs, no errors. Leading off for the Liz, uh, Le Liverpool Baseball Club this inning is going to be Mike Piazza. He is 0 for 2. And... Sam Rice is going to come in to play right field for the Lizards in place of Walker. Here's the pitch to Piazza. He goes down on strikes. That's the first out. So Mordecai Brown will now face off against Buck Weaver. Buck Weaver came in for the injured uh, Ozzie Smith. He's going to make his, he's got 13 at bats so far this season. Three of those were hits. So he comes in with a 231. It's his first plate appearance in this game after coming in as a substitute for the injury. And this is a fly ball, high, deep. And this is out over right field wall again. Buck Weaver comes in to substitute for the injury and scores a solo shot home run to tie this game up here in the bottom of seven. Both managers... Both owners for these two teams in the stadium tonight. Both must be on pins and needles watching this game. This is a back and forth struggle here. That brings up Brett Butler, who's two for three. He lined a triple in the first, singled in the third, and then struck out in the fifth. Having a decent night and a decent year with that 449 average up for the season. He's going to face off against Brown. Here's the delivery for Brown. So no two pitch and Butler goes down on strikes. So that's the second out. And that brings up Dan Bruthers, who's one for three tonight. Looking to keep this inning going, possibly score a go ahead run. And this is going to be a high deep fly, but not to the, it's to the wall, but that one was grabbed at the wall for the third out. So the one that looked like it might have gone home run wasn't. And the ones that I thought were fly balls were home runs. Getting thrown off by the uh, chalkboard tonight here in right field. All right, we go to the top of eight with the score all knotted at four. We're going to see Foster Mays and Caminiti for the Lizards. Foster his one for three so far in this game. He had an infield single. Pitch to Foster. He goes down on strikes. So that's the ninth strikeout tonight for Deacon Philippe and uh, the Liverpool Baseball Club. He has not issued a walk so far in this game, but he's got nine strikeouts. So he's pitching a heck of a game, even though four runs have scored against him. Willie Mays, who hit a big shot. Earlier in the game, it's up to bat, and this is going to get into right center field and to the wall. Jensen fields it off the wall, fires to three. Mays under the tag. He gets a triple. That's his second of the season. So Willie Mays now uh, having a heck of a night for the Lizards is on three. That's the go-ahead run there. On three for the Lizards. Only one out as Ken Caminiti, who's one for three, comes up. Here's the pitch to Caminiti, and this is going to be a high fly ball to Jensen. Is it deep enough to score? Mays, 
No, he's going to hold at three. Jensen had to come up into shallow right field to get that ball. So Mays felt he wasn't deep enough to tag and get home. So Philippe Deacon in a little bit of better shape here now with two outs. Breathing a little bit of sigh of relief. As he's hoping this third out is going to be a little easier now. He doesn't need, doesn't have to worry about that run scoring off a sack fly. He's going to face off against Sam Rice. Sam Rice, who came in as a defensive sub, is getting his first at-bat tonight. He comes in with a 200 average and one RBI. Pitch to Rice, and it's a shot into left center field past Weaver at short. That is going to be an RBI single for Rice. So once again, the Lehigh Lizards will take the lead by one here in the top of eight. That brings up Russell Martin, who's 0 for 3 tonight. Rice at first, taking a nice size lead. Deacon will look over at him. From the stretch, Rice is off and running. Piazza fires to Morgan at 2. Not in time. That's the second stolen base so far this year for Sam Rice. All right, so Martin with the 0-1 count. A runner on two and two outs. Deacon fires Ooh. back to two. Morgan, not in time. Sam Rice is back and holds a little closer now after that pickoff attempt by Deacon. Deacon fires to Martin. And it's a hard grounder to Fado, who can't field it cleanly. They're going to charge him with an error. Martin gets on base with that error, and Rice will advance to three. So Liverpool struggling a bit here with those two outs. Gave up a run, and now gives up another base runner thanks to that error by Joey Votto. Dave Concepcion, he's in the ninth spot for the Lizards. He is 0 for 3 so far this evening. Here's the pitch from Deacon to Concepcion, and this is going to be a fly ball in left field. Heath doesn't even have to move. That'll be the third out. We go off to the bottom of eight. One run off those two hits for the Lizards. No errors committed. We're going to see Jones, Heath, and Vado for Liverpool this inning. Mordecai three-finger brow still on the mound. He has 103 pitches so far tonight. Nine strikeouts, two walks. Here's the pitch from Brown to Jones. And wow, what a shot down right field line all the way to the wall. Jones around first. Rice will chase after the ball. He makes, he fires to Concepcion, who's covering the bag. But Jones makes it in time for his fifth double of the season. <laughs> Jeff Heath comes up. Tying run, standing on two with no outs. He's one for three so far this evening. Here's the pitch to Heath. And this is going to be a fly ball in left field. Foster makes the grab at the wall. Jones, unable to tag in advance, has to hold up at two. And that brings up Joey Votto, who's 0 for three. Down to Votto. And this is going to go straight up the poop shoot. Martin, underneath that, behind the plate, grabs it. That brings up Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan is two for two tonight. He hit that solo homer down right field line, and then he grounded a single. His next at bat, and he was walked his first plate appearance of the evening. So with that tying run on two, Liverpool looking to get that thing scored here in the bottom of eight. But Joe Morgan, who's having a good night, and this is another single, an RBI single for Morgan as Jones rounds third and comes home. Joe Morgan gets his third hit of the game and Liverpool comes back once again to tie up the game. Jackie Jensen will stroll up to the plate. He is one for two. Joe Morgan at first taking a huge lead. Mordecai Brown keeping an eye on him. From the stretch, Morgan's off and running. Martin fires to Biggio at second. Morgan in there. That's his second stolen base of the day, his fifth of the season. So Jim Jensen now with an 0-1 pitch. From Brown to Jensen, and this is going to get into right center field. Past Bijou at second for a base hit. Morgan around three. He's fast enough to hoof it home. 
An RBI single for Jensen now puts Liverpool back in the lead by one over Lehigh. This has been one heck of a game so far here on the bottom of eight. Mike Piazza comes up, who is 0 for 3 tonight, not having his best night. With that runner on one, he's facing two outs. Martin out to talk to Brown. Brown delivers to Piazza. Piazza with a shot to center field, but May is able to run up and grab that one for the third out. So two runs scored for the Lizards off of three hits. There were no errors committed. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, for Liverpool. No errors committed by the Lizards. So we go to the top of nine. Now it's the Le now it's the Lizards who need to fight from behind. Here with only three outs left at the top of nine. Both teams with 11 hits. Lehigh with five runs. Liverpool with six runs. Liverpool, the only team so far to commit an error in this game. So Deacon Philippe faces off against Craig Biggio. Uh, they're going to bring in the... Okay, so Liverpool is bringing in Bill Freehand to play catcher. They're also bringing in Kurt Flood to play center field. So Liverpool bringing in some defensive... Making some defensive adjustments to try and hold on to this one-run lead here in the top of nine. I have a feeling Clue wants that, wanted that and probably set that up in, in his manager profile and doing exactly what he was hoping it would do. All right. So Deacon delivers to Biggio. And this is going to be over Weaver's head at shortstop. He will field that one off the bounce and get that back in. So Biggio with a leadoff single as they trail by one. Now will bring up Cecil Cooper, who's one for three. Grounded a single way back in the first. Hasn't done much since then. He uh, bunted out on a sack bunt, struck out, and then lined to third. Biggio taking a huge lead at one. Here's the pitch. Oh, he fires over to one to try and get that runner who he thought was taking too big of a lead. But Biggio gets back in time and not showing any concern on that. He's going to continue that huge lead at first. As Cecil Cooper is waiting for the pitch. Here it is. And Cooper goes down on strike. So a big strike out there for Deacon. Got one out so far. A double play will end the game. At the same time, that tying run is standing there on first. The leading run is now at the plate. Jeff Bagwell's one for four. He struck out his last plate appearance. And they're going to bring in Chuck Noblock to pit. Pinch hit. And Philippe will fire over to one once again to try and get that runner out at first. Felt he's taking too big of a lead. Let's take a look at Chuck Noblock. He's batting 286 this season. He's got no RBIs and no home runs. But he does have two hits off of seven at bats. A pitch. Biggio is off and running. It's a hit and run. This is going to get into left center field. Biggio rounds two, hoofs it to three. So that tying run is now right there on third base for the Lizards. No block on first. Foster, the big hitting Foster, up at the plate. Foster is one for four. He got that single on the infield. Uh, back in the third, he struck out twice since then. Deacon, Philippe really needs to try and hunker down here if they want to end this game after this half. Otherwise, we could be going deep. Here's the pitch. Freehand's going to go out and talk to the pitcher, say, hey, let's calm it down a little bit. Here comes the pitch to Foster. And Foster with his third strikeout of the game. That's 11 for Deacon. Wow, what a time for the Lizards to have George Foster strike out. And now that tying run, not going to be as easy to get in. Standing there at third. Willie Mays, though, who is having a heck of a night. Three hits so far in this game. He grounded a single between third and short. He had a three-run homer down the left field line. He lined a short in the sixth. And then in the eighth, he lined a triple. So he's got a single, a homer, and a triple. A double will give him the cycle. 
Here's the pitch. Strike three. And he goes down strike. Uh, he goes down on strikes for the third out. Wow, with a hot night of his bat. What a sad way to end it for the Lehigh Lizards, who lose this game six to five to Liverpool. Oh, what a that's a heart that's gotta be a heartbreaker right there. You have your hottest bat at the plate. And he gets struck out for the third out. Biggio, two for five. Mays, three for five with that home run. Also that triple and the single and uh, three RBIs. Walker went two for three. So one home run for Lizards, that big shot by Mays. Uh, for Liverpool, Butler went two for four. Heath went one for four with a home run. Morgan went three for three. And he also had a home run, scored two runs. Jensen, two for three. And Weaver, one for one. So Lehigh had 13 hits, five runs, no errors. Liverpool, 11 hits, six runs, and one error. Mordecai Brown went the distance, or as far as he could go anyways. He's pitched eight full innings, gave up 11 hits, six earned runs, three home runs, two walks, nine strikeouts. So he came in with that zero ERA. After two shutouts earlier this season for him and his two appearances and struggled much more than he did in those two games for Liverpool. Deacon Philippe went nine full innings, 13 hits, five runs, all earned one home run, struck out 12 and gave up zero walks. So one heck of a game there for Deacon, who my guess is no Joe Morgan gets MVP of the game. For his three for three and home run. And let's see the injury. Ozzy Smith will be out till May 10th. So he's going to miss a few days here. About six days, five days before he gets back into the game. All right. We got one more live game we have to play. And that is going to be Hadley Lake at Carpathian. First, we got to go through Dallas at San Francisco. Dallas will get that win five to three. Young gets his fourth win of the season, goes four and two. Kovaleski goes three for three, gets his third loss. And now we're off to Hadley Lake at Carpathian. As we go into this game, Hadley Lake leads their division with 18 wins and six losses. Carpathian in that division is eight games back in fourth place. So Carpathian is hoping to get this game and maybe close up a little bit of a gap. I'm pretty sure we got the right park, so I'm not going to worry about that. All right. Let's see who we got here for these two teams. Off we go. All right, we're at Forbes Field uh, between Hadley Lake and Carpathia. And Hadley Lake has won nine of their last ten. They lost their last game. John Smoltz will start for Hadley Lake. He's got four starts on the year, and he's 3-0 and with an ERA of 338. This is going to be his second start against Carpathian. Jeff Facero will be on the mound for Carpathian. He's got five starts on the year. He's 3-1 and with an ERA of 144. It's his second start against Hadley Lake. It's 69 degrees. Wind speed, well, excuse me, wind speed is four miles per hour out to right field. Should be a good game here. I don't think Play this is the right image. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but it is, I don't, is that Forbes Field? I'm seeing so many fields tonight, I can't for, keep track of them anymore. All right. For the Hammers, leading off, Ty Cobb. Batting second, Ted Sizemore. Brett, George Brett will be batting third. In the cleanup spot, Bobby Veach. Rudy York batting fifth. Harry Heilman batting sixth. Willie Keeler batting seventh. Don Kessinger will be batting eighth. Mike McFarlane will be batting ninth. For the Carpathian defense, Moises Alou will be at left field. Cy Seymour in center field. Dave Parker in right field. Willie Stargell will be on first base. Phil Garner at second. Leo Cardenas, Cardenas 
will be at shortstop. Tommy Leach at third base. Mike Napoli is behind the plate, catching for Jeff Facero. Guys, if I'm pronouncing these names wrong, I'm sorry. I'm having a heck of a night trying to get through here tonight. Uh, he's got five games started, 25 innings pitched, 18 hits, two home runs, four earned runs, nine walks, 21 strikeouts, 144 ERA. Yeah, that's what I thought. This is not, I don't think it's, but I'm not going to change it. We're going to go with it. As you see, we've got the Forbes field effects in play for anybody that wants to know. The picture is the picture. The effects are how the game is set up. So we're good to go, even though the picture may not be accurate. All right, Ty Cobb with a 308 average will lead off for the Hammers. Facero will eventually throw this pitch. There it comes. And that's a grounder to Garner at second, who fires to Stargell for the first out. Ted Sizemore comes in with a 183 average. He's in the second spot for the Hammers. Here's the pitch to Sizemore, and this is going to go into the stadium stands down third base for a souvenir for somebody. Sizemore now with a full count. Pitch, and this is going to be a grounder to Cardinals. It's short. He fires over to Willie Stargell for the first out. I'm uh, sorry, for the second out. That brings up George Brett. George Brett batting 271 this season. Also has two home runs so far this year. And this is going to be in a shallow center field. Cy si Seymour will come up, make the grab. That'll be the third out to end the first half of the inning as Hadley Lake Hammers go down. One, two, three. The batting order for the Carpathian Wolves. Cy si Seymour will lead it off. Tommy Leach will be his will be the second batter. He'll be followed by Moises Zalou and Dave Parker will be batting cleanup. Willie Stargell batting five. Batting six will be Phil Garner. He'll be followed by Mike Napoli. Mike Napoli, who will be followed by Leo Cardenas. And that'll bring up the ninth hitter, Manny Sanguian. Batting ninth for the Hadley Lake defense. Bobby Veach in left field. Ty Cobb in center field. Willie Keeler in right field. Rudy York, first baseman. Second baseman, Ted Sizemore. Shortstop, Don Kessinger. Third baseman, George Brett. Mike McFarland will be behind the plate. And he'll be catching for John Smoltz, who comes in with four games started, 26 and two-third innings pitch, 25 hits, six home runs, 10 earned runs, three walks, 32 strikeouts, 338 ERA. He's got a win-loss record of 3-0. He's going to face off first against Cy Seymour. Cy Seymour having a heck of a year with that 355 average and six home runs so far here through early May. Smoltz delivers to Seymour, and Kessinger makes a fantastic play. He has to make a diving stop to get to that one and still make the throw to first in time to get Cy Seymour. He'll be followed by Tommy Leach, who's batting 184 this season. And Leach will drive this one up to second. Sizemore makes a great stop. Both balls right up the center. Kessinger makes a play, and then Sizemore makes the play. That's the second out. Moises Alou batting 309 this season. And a deep fly ball into center field. Cobb to his right. He'll make the grab. That's the third out. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go off to the top of two. We're going to see batters four, five, and six. That's going to be Bobby Leach leading this half of the inning off. He's batting 370 this season. We've got some big averages on both these teams. He's got three home runs so far. The pitch to Leach. And a fly ball into right field. Parker to his right. He makes the grab. That's the first out. Rudy York batting 190 this season. And he's got 10 home runs so far this year. Pitch to York, but he goes down on strikes. The fastball got him looking. And uh, 
So now we're going to go off to Harry Heilman, who's batting on 184. Pitch to Heilman, and this is going to be a into oh into the corner and right field, and that's the catch for the third out as we go off to the bottom of two again. No runs, no hits, no errors. So the, both teams going down one, two, three. For the Wolves, Dave Parker, Parker will lead this off. Dave Parker bat, uh, batting a 263. He's given up. He has rather five home runs and 24 RBIs so far this season. The pitch from Smoltz to Parker. Rounder to Sizemore. He fires to York in time for the first out. Willie Stargell with a 169 average comes up. He's got three home runs this year. Wow, what a shot down right uh, down first baseline all the way to the wall. Stargell around first. Keeler gives chase. He's going to fire to Kessinger who's covering the bag. Not in time. Willie Stargell under the tag. It's his sixth double of the season. York did not make a good play on that ball. And that allowed Stargell to get a double. So now the Wolves with the runner on two. The first hit of the game. And Phil Garner will come up with a 253 average. He's got six RBI so far this season. Looking to get another one. But he goes down on strikes. So caught looking there. And that's going to give the Carpathian Wolves two outs as Mike Napoli batting 200 comes up to the plate. Starts are still up two. Smoltz delivers to Napoli. High pop up towards second base, second baseman Sizemore. He's underneath that one for the third out. So the Wolves get one hit, but no runs, no errors committed. And we're at the top of three now where we're going to see Keeler, Kessinger and McFarlane. McFarlane, excuse me. Okay, Willie Keeler batting 300 this season. Pitch to Keeler, and this is going to get down into right field. Ball drops right in front of Parker. So Keeler with his, uh, with a first hit tonight so far for Hadley Lake Hammers, his first hit of the night. That brings up Don Kessinger, who's batting 267 this season. The pitch to Kessinger, and this is going to get into left field. Pass Cardenas at short for a single. Keeler two. rounds two and hoofs it off to three. He's in there safely. The throw not in time. So now Hadley Hammers with runners on one and three and no outs. And Mike McFarlane comes up, who's batting 167. Only six RBIs so far this season. But uh, a possibility here of adding to that stat with that runner right there on three. Here's the pitch to McFarlane. Oh, one pitch. Hot fly ball into shallow center field. Seymour's going to grab that. Keeler's going to go back and tag. He's going to go home. The throw to home. He's in there safe. That allows Kessinger to make it to second. So he does get his RBI on the sack fly. Kessinger gets all the way to two on that one. And that brings up Ty Cobb. We're back to the top of the lineup for the Hammers. Ty Cobb. With a solid 304 average this season and eight RBIs. Only one out for Cobb. This ball behind Napoli, but he fires, he corrals it, fires to three, and they get him in time. Wow, what a tag by Leach to get Kessinger. He's not in there under that tag. So a big play, Napoli to Leach for that second out. So now Cobb has no runners on base, facing the 2 1 pitch. And this is going to go oh. foul down first baseline. So Ty Cobb now facing the 2-2 pitch. And he goes down on strikes. That'll be the end of that inning. But not before Hadley Lake scores one run off of two hits. No errors committed by the Wolves. For the Wolves, we're going to see batters 8, 9, and 1. That's going to be Leo Cardenas who is batting 260 this season. And the pitch, and this is going to be into right field for a single. So both teams now struggling for the first two innings to get any hits, starting his hits going here. That brings up Manny Sanguian. He's batting 218 this season. 
He's got one home run and seven RBIs. Cardenas stands at first. And here's the pitch. Sanguian, this is going to be down third base foul down third baseline. So Manny is now facing the 0-2 pitch. Runner still on one. Oh, a shot in the right center field. So Sanguian gets this shit, uh, hit. Both uh, the runner advances to second. So we got runners on one and two with no outs. And the hard hitting, Cy Seymour, who's 0 for 1 tonight. Six home runs on the season and 14 RBIs, facing no outs with runners on one and two. And this is going to be a fly ball on the field. Veach gets under that one. Both runners will retreat back to their bags and have to remain on one and two. Tommy Leach comes up. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Only one out. And he goes down on strikes. So the Wolves get themselves two base runners right off the bat. And now, just like that, they got two outs. But Moises Alou comes up. And he's got a solid 305 this season. He's 0 for 1 tonight. He's got 17 RBIs so far this season and four home runs. We'll see the pitch from Smoltz. And a grounder to Brett, who fires over to Sizemore for the out. That ends the threat. Two hits, no runs, and no errors. We go to the top of four. Where we'll see batters two, three, and four for Hadley Lake Hammers. That's going to be Ted Sizemore leading off this half inning for the Hammers. He's 0 for 1. Pitch. And this is going to get into left field. Ali will get that off the bounce. Sizemore with a single. And now George Brett comes up, who's 0 for 1. Sizemore taking a short lead. He's off and running. Napoli fires to Card Car And not in time. Ted Sizemore gets the stolen base, his first of the season. All right, George Brett with no outs facing the 0 1 count. A runner on two. And this is a liner to Car Cardenas at shortstop, who will grab that one for the first out. Bobby Veach comes up batting a hard, solid 366 average this season. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Oh, oh. He gets walked. So Facero puts a runner on first with a runner on second. Now a double play ball will get them out of this inning. But that brings up Rudy York. It's to York. He goes down on strike. So now there's two outs for the Hammers as Harry Heilman comes up. 0 for 1 tonight. The pitch to Heilman and a high fly ball in the center field. Seymour to his right makes the grab. That'll be the third out. One hit, no runs, no errors. Bottom of four. We're going to see Parker, Stargell, and Garner for the Wolves. It's to Parker. He goes down on strikes. So Smoltz with his third strike out of the night. Willie Stargell's one for one. He goes down on strikes. So Smoltz strikes out two in a row. Now faces off against Phil Garner, who digs in. It's from Smoltz. And, wow, what a shot to right center field all the way to the wall. Garner rounds one. Gets into two in time. It's his third double of the season. So the Wolves, once again, have a tying run on two. But two outs for Mike Napoli. It was 0 for 1 tonight. Napoli with a bounder to three. Brett fires over to York at one. That's the third out. Wolves unable to score again with that runner on base. One hit, no runs. We're at the top of five. Keeler, Kessinger, and McFarlane for the Hammers will come up to the plate. Will, Willie Keeler, he's one for one tonight. Here's the pitch to Keeler. And he's two for two tonight. That gets into left, left field. Ali will come up, pick that up. He's a hard grounder down into left field. So that brings in Kessinger, who's also one for one tonight. And this is going to be a bunt. Stargell will come up and field it and tag Kessinger on his way to one for the out. 
But Keeler gets to two, so the sack bunt did what the Hammers wanted it to do, and that was to advance that runner. Mike McFarlane batting ninth in the lineup. He was he feel he flied to shallow right center, but it was a sack fly. His last at bat, and so he has no official at bats tonight. Here's the pitch to McFarlane, and this is going to be the center field. Cy, uh, Cy Seymour is able to get over there and grab that in time. He fires to three to make sure the runner does not take off to three. Keeler will hold at two. Ty Cobb, who's 0 for 2 tonight. Strike three. And Ty yeah. Cobb goes down on strikes. So that'll end that inning. One hit, no runs, no errors. We go to the bottom of five. Let me catch up on some things. I saw Jamie come in. Hello, Jamie. I saw MV. Hello, MV. And Legends just came in. Thank you all for stopping by. hope everybody's enjoying the stream and the games. We're going to get through a bunch of games here after this one because we're going to autoplay through the next week to get us into uh, week two for May. We're going to finish May by Wednesday night so we can get the new file out Thursday and get ready for uh, June on uh, Friday. All right, Leo Cardenas comes up, uh, who's one for one tonight for the Wolves. The pitch from Smoltz. Hard grounder to Brett at third. He fires across the diamond for the first out. Sing Manny Singian comes up. He's one for one tonight. The pitch to Manny. This is going to be in the center field. Cobb to his left. He's under that for the second out. Cy Seymour. He's 0 for 2. One of the better hitters for the Wolves. Not getting hit so far tonight, but here's this pitch from Smoltz, and this is going to go straight up the chute. McFarlane throws off the mask. He gets under that one for the third out. We go to the top of six. Ted Sizemore will lead off for the Hadley Lake Hammers. Pitch to Sizemore, and a hard grounder to Cardenas at short. Fires to Stargell for the first out. George Brett comes up. Pitch to Brett. And this is a pop-up towards one. Stargell will get under this one for the second out. Bobby Veach. Bobby Veach will hit a hard grounder over Leach. And that's all the way to the wall. Alou gives chase. Veach rounds one. And the, the Alou will fire it back into uh, cutoff. So Bobby Veach just strolls into two with a stand-up double. Uh, Bobby Leach, I'm sorry, not Bobby Leach, <laughs> Tommy Leach. So Veach past Leach. He couldn't reach to get the ball in time. All right, enough of that shit. We're on to York. Rudy York over for two with a runner on two and two outs. And a grounder to Leach who fires to Stargell for the third out. And we go to the bottom of six. We will see Tommy Leach lead off for the Wolves. Uh, yeah, I agree, Jamie. Sheesh is right after all of that. All right. So Tommy Leach, who's 0 for 2. And this is going to be into right field. Pass Sizemore in second for a base hit. So Leach now on, on one as Moises Alou comes to the plate. Leach taking a big lead at one. Smoltz from the stretch. Leach is off and running. It's a hit and run. Sizemore picks it up off the ground, throws to York, gets the leadoff, I'm sorry, gets the batter. The leadoff runner will advance to second. Dave Parker, who's 0 for 2, has a runner on two and faces one out. Trying to get that run in to tie this game up. Deep ball to center field. But Cobb is able to get back to get that. Leach will tag. Run to three. The throw from is in time to get him out. So Leach out trying to get to three after the tag. Cobb threw him out. We're off to the top of seven now. And that'll bring up Harry Heilman, who's 0 for 2 so far in the game. 2-0 pitch is a hard hit over Car past Card uh, Cardenas, who 
uh, did not make a good play on that. So Heilman gets a hit. That gets to left center field. That brings up Willie Keeler, who's two for two. Singled in the third and then another single in the fifth. With that runner on one who's not taking. Heilman is not taking a big lead. Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's a bunt. Facero will come off the mound to field that. He gets the batter at one. That was a uh, sack bunt there by Keeler. Once again, advancing the runner to two. Hadley Lake likes to try to play that small ball, it appears, using those sack bunts to advance runners. Don Kessinger, who's 0 for, I'm sorry, 1 for 1. He grounded a single in the third and then a sack bunt in the fifth. He also played some small ball his last at bat. This is going to be a liner to Short, who makes the grab for the second out. I'm going to stop trying to pronounce names. I've been drinking a little bit today, so, uh, yeah, the names are not coming out like they should. I'm just going to stop pushing it. All right, Mike McFarlane, who's 0 for 1, runner on 2, and this is going to be a high pop-up to Cardenas at second, at short, and he makes the grab to go to the seventh inning stretch. All right, we're back from the stretch. The uh, Hammers went down one, two, three. No runs, no... I'm sorry, one hit. They did not go down one, two, three. They did have a hit, uh, but no runs and no errors committed by the Wolves. Wolves still trail by one in this low-scoring one nothing game. Wolves just need a single run to tie this up as Willie Stargell will lead off for the Wolves. Here's the pitch from Smoltz to, Will, uh, to Willie. And it's back to the mound. Smoltz will come off the mound to field that one. Throws it over to one. Stargell is out for the first out. Phil Garner. One-two pitch. He goes down on strikes. That's the second out. And now Mike Napoli. One-two pitch. And this is going to get into right center. I'm sorry, left center field. Mike Napoli with a single tonight. Now. Leo Cardenas comes up. He's one for two. Runner on that tying run for the Wolves at one. Once again on the back on the on the back on the paths. All right. That was a single into left center field. Napoli gets all the way to three. It's a bad throw. Error number one by Bobby Veach. Bobby Veach credit with a uh, a throwing error after feeling that in left center. And that was a, the throw was bad enough to allow the runner to come home. And Cardenas gets all the way to three on that hit. So a terrible time to make an error for the Hadley Lake Hammers. The game is now all tied up with two outs. And Manny Sanguian, who's one for two tonight, now at the plate. Farlane was going to go out and talk to Smoltz. And this is a hard shot in the center field for a base hit. That'll drive in an RBI. So now the Wolves take the lead by one with two outs. Cy Seymour looking to get his name in the hit column. He's having a great season. Is this going to do it? No, he's going to get walked by Smoltz. So Smoltz with 110 pitches so far in the game has issued his first walk of the game. He has five strikeouts. Tommy Leach digs in. Runners on one and two with two outs. Here's the full count pitch, and he gets walked. So Smoltz now walks two in a row. Had not walked anybody in the game. Now walks two in a row. That brings up the very dangerous Moises Alou. And they're not going to take a chance with Smoltz anymore after issuing two walks. Howard Emke is going to come into pitch. Uh, this is his very first appearance this season. 
So he has no stats so far this year. And he's going to come in and face off against Moises Alou with bases loaded and two outs. He's got to get them out of a jam here. Here's the pitch to Alou. And a liner to Kessinger. Kessinger makes a diving uh, catch on that one to make that third out. What an amazing catch by Kessinger to get them out of that inning. If that got by him, yeah, that glove there, that could have scored two, maybe even three, because that was a hard hit shot. So the hammer is able to get out of that jam, but they still trail by one here in the top of eight. We're at the top of the lineup for the hammers. Ty Cobb, who's not in the hit column so far in this game, will take the pitch. And this is high and deep, but Alou gets back to the track and makes the grab near the wall for the first out. Looked like Ty Cobb was going to get his first hit, but Alou steals it from him. As Ted Sizemore comes up, he's one for three. And he gets struck out. So Jeff Facero uh, has struck out five so far in this game with one walk. Here's the pitch to Brett. And this is going to be into right center field. Parker all the way over to grab that in time for the third out. We go to the bottom of eight where Parker, who just made that fantastic running grab to end that inning, is going to lead us off. Two pitch. And it's a drop third strike. McFarlane picks it up, throws to first in time to make sure that out gets rung up. Willie Stargell on one pitch. Fly ball to right center. Keeler giving chase. It's over Keeler's head. He's not going to get there. Uh, Stargell with a stand up double. His second of the day, his seventh double of the season. Keeler couldn't get to that, got over his head. So now the Wolves, who already lead by one, have an insurance run right there on second with only one out as Phil Garner comes up. And this is going to be a grounder to Kessinger. He fires to York. He gloves it for the second out. Stargell still on two. Mike Napoli on one for three. Stargell's three, off, three. but Napoli goes down on strikes to end the inning. We go to the top of nine. The Hadley Lake Hammers, who've won their last who won nine out of the last 10. They lost their very last game in danger of losing their second game in a row after being on an amazing win streak. So they're down to Veach, York, and Heilman to get something started here to try and get this game at least tied up with three outs left. And Veach goes down on strikeouts. So on a strikeout. So uh, that's the first out. In the top of nine here, that brings up Rudy York. He's 0 for 3. Can get on base. He gets no. struck out. So two strikeouts in a row for Jeff Facero. Big time to make these strikeouts. That's his seventh of the game. Only allowed one walk so far. And that brings up Harry Heilman. The hammer's down to the last out to try and tie this game up. It's a grounder to Leach. Leach makes a poor play, so he's not able to get to the ball in time. He makes a poor run on the ball. And Heilman able to beat the throw. So now the Hammers have that tying run right there on first. But it is two outs. Willie Keeler is two for two. He singled in the third, singled in the fifth, and then uh, had a sack bunt in the seventh. We will not be seeing a sack bunt here. But he's hoping to continue his hit streak going. Facero <laughs> fires over to one. Heilman back in time. He's not even taking that big of a lead. So, interesting. To Keeler. And it's a grounder. Stargell picks it up. Facero will cover the bag. And that'll be the third out. The Wolves for the big win over Hadley Lake. Two to one. Tight game. Let's go to the box score real quick. Hadley Lake Hammers, seven hits, one run, one error. The Carpathian Wolves, nine hits, two runs, no errors. Some highlight hitting from Hadley Lake. Heilman goes two for four. Keeler, two for three. Over here for the uh, Carpathian Wolves, Stargell goes two for four. 
there was no home runs given up in the game. Cardenas, by the way, goes two for three, and Sanguian goes two for three. Smoltz pitched six and two-thirds. Eight hits, two runs, one earned run, two walks, five strikeouts. Emke comes in for one and a third, one hit, no runs, two strikeouts. Jeff Acera goes the distance, nine innings, seven hits, one earned run, one run, one earned run, one walk, seven strikeouts. And the MVP goes to Jeff Acero, the pitcher for the Carpathian Wolves. All right, let's keep going. Got a long way to go here. All right, we are on. Make sure that's right. We just finished up. Yes, we just finished up the fourth. We're going to play the fifth now. So let's get through some of these games. Vegas at Tampa Bay. Vegas with a one one run win over Tampa Bay, six to five. Bo, Bo, uh, bro, bro, oh my God, Ta- Vegas won that game. All right, Dgens over Hager uh, at Hagerstown. Dgens drop it to Hagerstown, five to four. Chicago at Lancaster. Chicago with a big win over Lancaster, five to three. Lehigh at Liverpool. Lehigh gets a win over Liverpool. So they bounce back after their loss to Liverpool to get the win here. Manchester at Cleveland. Manchester drops it to Cleveland. Wow. Seven to two. Canada at Florence. Canada beats Florence four to one. We know that World's Worst was worried about that game against Florence. And he was looking for an easy win. He ended up getting it. Chico's at Long Island. And Chico's pulls off a big win, 8-3 to three over Long Island. Berlin at Teville. Teville with a win over Berlin, 4-3. to three. Amazing at Edmonton. Edmonton, 4, amazing 3. Mid-Michigan at St. Pete. St. Pete gets this game, 3-2 to two over Mid-Michigan. Seeing some close scores here. Hadley Lake at Carpathian. And this time, Hadley Lake absolutely crushes the Wolves, 11-1. to one. Dallas at San Fran. Dallas 10, San Fran 3. Hadley Lake at Carpathian again in the doubleheader. And Hadley Lake takes both games today. This time they win 3-1. to one. Iron Joe loses his second of the season. We go off to the 6th of May. Quick roundup of the standings. Chico's in the win division, three and a half over Lehigh. Dallas, one and a half over Berlin in the Earth Division. Hadley Lake, six game lead over Mid Michigan in the Water Division. And Canada with just a one run, I'm sorry, a one game lead over Canada in the Fire Division. Chicago at Lancaster. Big win by Lancaster, 12 to 7 over Chicago. Lots of scoring going on there. Canada at Florence, Canada six, Florence two. So Canada able to take both games from Florence so far. I'm sure that Sean is doing a happy dance right now. Lehigh at Liverpool, Liverpool comes back. And that game has been a rubber match. Liverpool wins this one, three to two. Seacott with his fourth win of the season, hands with his third loss. Berlin at Teville, Berlin beats Teville this time, five to four. Amazing at Edmonton. Amazing beats Edmonton 1-0. And then Mid-Michigan at St. Pete. Oh, and Mid-Michigan drops this one to St. Pete 2-0. Let's go off to the seventh. Many more games this inning. This game this day, we've got Chicago at Edmonton. Edmonton wins 3-2 over Chicago. Chico's at Liverpool. Chico's back at Liverpool again. All right, Chico's loses their first game of the season to Liverpool, 5-3. to three. Plank is 3-4 and four on the season. Seaver drops his second in a row to go 3-3. Three and three. Manchester at Teville. Manchester, 5, Teville, 3. Vegas at St. Pete. St. Pete shuts Vegas out 2 to nothing. Tex Houston gets his third loss of the season. Johnson gets his first win. Dgens at Long Island. Dgens with a big win over Long Island, eight to three. Joss gets his third win. Palmer his fifth. 
loss. Amazing at Florence. Amazing seven, Florence five. Lehigh at Hagerstown. Whoa, a huge win by Lehigh, 13 to three over Hagerstown. Boy, the bats came alive for the Lizards in that game, that's for sure. Mays went five for five with a home run and two RBIs. Dallas at Cleveland. Dallas five, Cleveland two. Maddox is a solid seven wins, no losses this season for the Diamonds. Alt Rock, one and four. Hadley Lake at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay six, Hadley Lake two. So Hadley Lake continues to struggle a little bit here this week. Ryan gets his second win of the season, and Waddell gets his second loss. Canada at Lancaster. Canada beats Lancaster 5-2. to two. Mid-Michigan at Carpathian Wolves. Carpathian with a big win, 6-2 to two over Mid-Michigan. Tightens up a couple of teams in that division. And Berlin drops one to San Fran. We go off to the eighth. We'll take a quick look at the standings again. Chico's three games ahead of Lehigh. Dallas is two games over Berlin, two and a half over Manchester in the Earth Division. Hadley Lake, five-game lead in the Water Division. And Canada stretches their lead out to two now over Lancaster in the Fire Division. Amazing at Florence. Florence wins this one, eight to six. Manchester at Teville. Manchester Bounces back and wins this one 5-3. to three. Webb gets his fifth win. He's 5-0 and oh this season. And once again, Ruth struggling his sixth loss. So Babe Ruth is 1-6 on the mound as a pitcher so far with just a little over a month into this season. Very, very sad to see. DGENs at Long Island. Long Island 8, DGENs 5. Chicago at Edmonton. Chicago comes back after losing a couple and wins the game. Carlton gets his first win of the season. Lehigh at Hagerstown. And Lehigh gets shut out again by Hagerstown. I believe that was they were the ones that shut them out before. Hagerstown won. Lehigh zero. We have Dallas at Cleveland. Cleveland shuts out Dallas 2-0. Hadley Lake at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay four, Hadley Lake three. So Hadley Lake really on a slide this week, losing lots of games, way more than they were hoping to lose. And we go off to Canada at Lancaster here on the 8th of May. This time Canada gets the win. I'm sorry, Lancaster gets the win over Canada. Trout is now 0-3 on the season. Chico's at Liverpool. Liverpool with two wins in a row over Chico's. Matthewson gets his sixth win. Kershaw with his fourth loss. Struggling for Chico's. Vegas at St. Pete. St. Pete gets the win uh, over Vegas, 2-1. to one. Mid-Michigan at Carpathian Wolves. And Mid-Michigan will take that one, 9-5. to five. Chance, 0-3 on this season. And Berlin and San Fran, Berlin four, San Francisco, Safe Crackers zero. Perez three and zero. Oh. Bagby drops his second. Off to the ninth. We got a whole big slate of games again. Hadley Lake at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay with a four-two win over Hadley Lake once again. Hadley Lake really struggling here early in May. Chico's at Liverpool. And Chico's loses again to Liverpool. So Chico's swept Liverpool in the first series four times. But now Liverpool coming back and getting some revenge on Chico's. Takes another one from Chico's. Manchester at Teville. Teville beats Manchester in a high-scoring game, 10-7. to Vegas at St. Pete. Vegas wins this one, 6-4. to four. Messer Smith with his fourth win of the season. DGENs at Long Island. DGENs wins this one two to one. 
amazing at Florence. And amazing seven Florence two shilling four and oh this season. Stone is still winless. Chicago at Edmonton. Chicago five, Edmonton zero. Hank Borowie, third win of the season. Lehigh at Hagerstown. Lehigh wins another one, five to three. Abernathy's now two and zero. Oh. Spawn is zero oh and one. Dallas at Cleveland. Cleveland three, Dallas two. Canada at Lancaster. Lancaster with another win over Canada, three to two. Wilhelm has his fourth win. He's 4-0 on the season. Richard, J.R. Richard, 0-3. Oh wow. Hadley Lake at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay with another win over Hadley, Hadley Lake, 2-1. to one. Hadley Lake is just sliding. They're sinking into that lake at Hadley Lake. Berlin at San Fran. San Fran, 6. Berlin, 1. And Mid-Michigan at Carpathian. Mid Michigan with a big win again over Carpathian, seven to one. We've got two more days we have to sim out so we can start off the second week. Let's go recap real quick. Chico's with a two game lead over Lehigh. Dallas with one game over Berlin. Hadley Lake, three and a half over Amazing. That lead has really shrunk there. Hadley Lake with a big lead at the beginning of the week. And Lancaster and Canada all tied up in the fire division. Mid Michigan at Tampa. Mid Michigan with a win over Tampa, five to two. Chicago at Florence. Florence takes that one, seven to four. Canada at Edmonton. Oh my goodness, Edmonton beats Canada four to three. That that is shocking. Dgens at Liverpool. Dgens with a big win, nine. Nine to seven. Beckett, Josh Beckett gets his first win of the season. Eddie Seacott drops his third to go four and three. Lehigh at Long Island. Lehigh's win streak continues. They beat Long Island five nothing. And amazing at Lancaster. Amazing six. Lancaster one. That's going to tie that division all back up. Lancaster was all excited there when they saw Canada drop it and then dropped it themselves. Chicago at four. This is going to be the last day. We're going to sim this day out, and we're going to pass this file off. I'm sure somebody will run some games tonight. We're going to do game uh, weeks two, three, and four all by Wednesday night so that we can get into June on Friday. All right, Chicago at Florence. Florence four, Chicago three. Ouch. Berlin at Cleveland. Cleveland, eight. Berlin, three. Again, ouch. Canada at Edmonton. Canada beats Edmonton this time. Three to one. Alexander gets his fifth win of the season. Chico's at Hagerstown. Chico's drops another one. They're now 20 and 14. Uh, they lose 11, a big game, 11 to three. Struggling at the, at the plates here. Struggling to score some runs for Chico's. Dgens at Liverpool. Dgens gets crushed by Liverpool 12 to 1. Matthewson with his seventh win already this season. Ames 3 and 3. Mid Michigan at Tampa Bay. Mid Michigan takes that one over Tampa Bay. 1 0. Lehigh at Long Island. Lehigh drops one. They lose their first game in a while. Long Island beats them 7 to 3. Dallas at Teville. Teville with a 2 1 win over Dallas. Hadley Lake at St. Pete. Hadley Lake 8, St. Pete 3. So Hadley Lake finally bounces back. It's a big win there. I'm sure they're happy to see that again. Amazing at Lancaster. An amazing beats Lancaster 6 to 5. Manchester at San Fran. Manchester, excuse me, Manchester gets a big. All right, sorry about that. My my, my uh, headphones died out on me. Uh, Manchester wins eight to seven. 
over San Fran. And now Vegas at the Wolves. And Carpathian with a big win over Vegas, 8-3. to three. Let's take a look at the standings. Chico's now with only a one-and-a-half game lead over Cleveland and Lehigh, who are tied for second. Dallas with half a game over Manchester. Berlin trails by one. Liverpool by two. Hadley Lake leads amazing by three. Mid-Michigan is three and a half back. And over the fire division, Canada, once again in the lead, one game over Lancaster. Chicago and Vegas, four games back. All right, that was a long week. And we are going to pack this file up and get it off. I hope everybody enjoyed the games and the uh, stream. It was a rough one for me. I apologize. Um, but we look forward to getting on to uh, the rest of this week. We're going to do a lot of streaming. So uh, look forward to look for rather t Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday should all see streams in order to get this week finished up in time for the league file to come out Thursday. The league file is suppo supposed to come out uh, from now on early Thursday. That's going to give everybody uh, about 24 hours to by noon Friday to get your manager file in. This is going to allow uh, broadcasters to start streaming again on Friday night. Most people like, I think, the weekend streams, Fridays and Saturday nights and Sundays, of course. Uh, just gives us more time and to, to, to stream and more time for everybody to see their games. Uh, I don't know for a fact, but I'm going to take a guess that the, the broadcasters will continue to do what we've been doing, and that is highlight every team at the very beginning of the weekend so everybody can see their teams going forward, continue to play, um, whether good or bad, uh, all the teams will be seen. All right, so let's say, uh, hey, Carlos, all right, let's uh, give some thanks out. Carlos, thank you for coming by. World's Worst, David, um, Steve, Mike came in. Uh, who else? Uh, we had Big Clue, of course, was here. Bernie, thank you for coming by. Will Tool came in. I wonder how long he stuck around. Have you watched his team drop a bunch? Um, Jamie, Legends came by. Thank you. Um, MV was here for a little bit. I don't know if he's still around. I know it's late where he's at. Let's see if I'm missing anybody. I apologize if I miss anyone. I'm trying to get everybody, though. Uh, there's a lot of people came by. Uh, Bernie was the first into the park ready to go, and Big Clue was right behind him. Thank you all. Um, it's getting exciting. We've got some close races here, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen by the end of this uh, this month. It should be a, another fun season going forward. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to pass this file off. We'll see everybody on Discord. Good night, everybody.